Pro Cycling Manager 2019 was received with very positive reviews across the board. And Pro Cycling Manager 2020 sees even more improvements to the UI, the AI and the career. But is it enough? A great win in the sprint of the strongman. Hi, I'm Sim UK and today I'm going to tell you all about Pro Cycling Manager 2020. If you're not all that familiar with either Pro Cycling Manager or cycling in general, then Pro Cycling Manager 2020 is a management game for a pro cycling team, but that's not all it is. The game also has a multiplayer mode, a single player pro rider career. It also supports a single event, which is great for practice and gives you the option for track races so that you can pit your skills in a variety of different disciplines. Prior to Pro Cycling Manager 2020, I barely tried single player career mode at all. I always tried to focus on the manager career. And as such, I have always struggled to really get into the game. And the reason for that is because there are a lot of stats and terms and screens and things to organize. The list just goes on and on. This year, I found single player mode to be far more accommodating for a complete noob like me. And I would heartily recommend to any new players to start with the single player pro rider career as well, because it allows you to focus on just a single rider. You can try different things and then learn from your mistakes. It's been a great way for me to improve really quickly. And there's an awful lot to learn in this game. Pro Cycling Manager 2020 and all that came before it do have decent tutorials with multiple guidance elements along the way, but they are very, very wordy. And that's not a criticism. It has to be because there is so much you need to understand before you can be really good at this game. I always felt though that some of the important absolute basics are not covered particularly well. And I always felt like I was floundering a little bit. Now that I'm playing in single player mode, I am learning much more. And for once, I am actually progressing and having a lot of fun whilst doing it. If you want, you can follow along with my Let's Play career on Sim UK Let's Play. I would definitely appreciate your guidance and maybe a bit of support. Down. The teammates of those in the breakaway are not going to make an effort. It's up to the other teams to get their fingers out. In Manager Mode, you will pick up an existing team or create a new team from scratch. Then you will set about managing the entire team through every single stage of their career. It's nothing short of a gargantuan set of micromanagement. One of the new features for the manager career is rider morale. This becomes a fundamental state which needs to be managed effectively in order to get the most out of your team. And there's a new planning system which automatically assigns races to cyclists. This can dramatically reduce your workload. But my focus this year has been on the pro rider career. Now the game provides a small amount of customization, name, nationality, height, weight, and your face. But more importantly, you get to pick between one and three specializations, which will boost beneficial skill levels in those areas. Finally, you will end by selecting your difficulty, which is effectively termed as career potential. Then you will pick your starting team each of which will have varying levels of ability and your position and specialization within each team will change as a direct result of their ability. Each event will be accompanied with objectives from your manager. Equally, you will be expected to support and meet goals set out by your team leader. It seems to me that these two regularly conflict with each other, making your life just that little bit more complicated. A new addition to the HUD is that messages relating to both of these will now pop up in the bottom right of the HUD, and sometimes it helps that that happens. Achieving the manager's expectations will earn his respect and will earn you XP, but then so will getting good results. Sadly, whilst there is a bar to reflect how the manager is feeling about you within the stats, there is nothing there for the team. So you can literally ignore the team and ride solo as much as you want, and the team won't say a single word. There is also a skill tree section, and as you rank up you can gain some small enhancements. I don't think it's too OP, although there is one that allows you to earn more XP, so eh, maybe.
Even when you're in solo career mode, you can still make requests of your teammates, but mostly this happens when you've earned the right to be a team leader. That hasn't happened to me yet, neither has winning a stage. Although you can make direct requests for changes from the manager if you have enough influence points. You can request to change events or choose your teammates for a special upcoming event. Races can be long and they can spread over multiple stages. So strategy and teamwork is key to retaining performance long term. You can choose to speed up time or automatically simulate the result, but it is way more immersive to ride in real time. Now riding is mostly going to be about managing your energy, your stamina, your boost and your water, and also deciding when and where to attack. Nobody ever won the Tour de France alone and trying to do so will likely leave you high and dry. The real skill is learning when to work with the team, when to break away, when to attack, and what cadence is right for the section that you're currently on. To get it right is hard. And even if you do get it right today, it will probably be wrong tomorrow because of the many changing factors within this game. You have injury, fatigue, fitness, you as a rider will improve, and you have something called race day conditions, which can have a major influence over your ability, which is also now more unpredictable. These race day conditions can give you a massive boost or even a massive deficit. But that's not all. There's also the ground surfaces that need to be taken into consideration, especially if you're racing on cobblestones, which can be deadly. Riders can fall and take out other riders at the same time, or they can get punctures and have to stop and wait for a new tire. Throw in some nasty weather and your bike configuration, and it's pretty much brain overload time. Plus, the AI are even more aggressive now and far more likely to attack. Pro Cycling Manager 2020 is tough going, and I love that. And most of your time will be spent within the 3D races, and they provide realistic weather and nicely modelled scenery along each route. And with almost every single professional race incorporated directly into the game, including all 21 official stages of the Tour de France, which is fully licensed by the way, there are 650 stages and 230 events on offer. Now the 3D race graphics, I think, are okay. You might question me on that, but one of the greatest things about the graphics is that this game will run on a complete potato PC. So I can take my old non-gaming laptop into the garden and chill out with a glass of lemonade whilst I play. That being said, I would very much like to see the riders lean more realistically when they're going around corners, and I'm not a huge fan of them cycling through each other and even the team vehicles. But as is, it's more than enough for me. Now, mostly it is the switch to the pro rider career that's helping me progress this year, but also some of the new UI enhancements are helping to better organize and display the absolute acres of data that are involved in this game. The UI dashboard has had yet another overhaul, and this time I am massively, massively a fan of it. It's amazing how much data is being displayed and is processed thanks to this brilliant UI design. Everything is neat and tidy, and with the new pop-out features, it's just brilliant, as is the excellent use of screen space and color. There are still some areas where the UI could be improved. Selecting all in certain circumstances, let's say when you want to set everyone to exactly the same thing, like training, for example, some improvements could be made in order to reduce some of the multi-click requirements. But indeed, I am a massive fan of the hub, and its expanding sections. It just works brilliantly. Pro Cycling Manager 2020, like all that preceded it, has huge volumes of data, and this UI design is an absolute masterclass of presentation. The in-game music is pretty relaxed. I quite like it, actually. And in the race, you can hear the crowd, you can hear support vehicles, and I think even the bike chains as you're whirring around. It's not bad, but it could be better. I watched some gameplay footage the other day of Le Tour de France 2020, and it appears to have much better in-race audio. So maybe next year we can see some improvements in this area. Again, the commentator in Le Tour de France 2020 seems to be quite a bit better too. 
The problem with this commentator, who's been the same commentator for quite a while now, he has a single phrase or comment for any event that happens within the race. And really, he does need to have at least a handful of sayings for each incident. But I guess it is better to have a commentator than none at all. But only just. The level of realism in Pro Cycling Manager 2020 is nothing short of incredible. The stats, the data, the ever-changing number of variables. So much can be learnt about real-life road racing and cycling just by playing this game. My level of understanding has expanded tenfold since playing Pro Cycling Manager 2020, and that's pretty incredible. It's so good that I've actually just signed up to Zwift, which is an online cycling app, and it got me to thinking. I would love to see La Tour de France incorporate something like that into their game. That would be incredible. But I digress. The AI are no doubt better this year than they have been in previous years. They are said to be more aggressive. I'm not sure that I feel it's quite right yet. I still feel that there's a lack of intelligence that can be observed in any of the AI opponents, or even my own team, who seem especially unwilling to make any form of attack at any point throughout any event. I have tried supporting them, but actually I've had far more success just ignoring the team and pretty much doing my own thing whilst trying to achieve the manager tasks. At one point, my team actually did get behind me, and they actually protected me for a change. It was working so unbelievably well, I actually thought I was going to win the entire event. Until about 50% through the stage, when they just dropped me. Now, I've no idea why, they just refused to support me at the time when I needed it most. It was most infuriating, I have to say. So I think some work on the AI is still required, but... AI is an ongoing development thing. You're unlikely to ever get to the point where it's perfect for everyone's expectations. So as long as there are improvements and enhancements, I'm kind of okay with the progress that we're making. The controls and the camera are pretty decent in-game. One camera control which is never mentioned is zoom. By pressing the alt key while scrolling on the mouse, you can alter the distance of the third person zoom level. It's a great feature. There doesn't appear to be a first person cam yet though. Again, that's something that does exist in Le Tour de France 2020. So maybe that's a feature that is coming in the future. You can flick, swap and change between any of the riders or any of the groups within the race at any time. And this works absolutely seamlessly. Although sometimes I have discovered that it's switched to a different rider and I haven't noticed. So, hmm. It's probably me that's causing that problem, but it is certainly something that's caused me one or two issues along the way. The on-screen controls and management seem absolutely identical. There are no changes that I can see here other than the previously mentioned HUD exchanges. And I suppose if it isn't broken, why try and fix it? Modding in the game does allow for rider names and stats to be altered. Teams can be created and jerseys can be changed. Unfortunately, it's not available on the Steam Workshop. It's an external thing and the process for modding stuff yourself seems to be a little cumbersome. I've tried a little bit to get into it and I've failed. So it's not as straightforward and streamlined as it could be. I would really like to see something in game that allows you to make these changes to be made more easily and maybe some kind of bike styling options would be nice too. But having the ability to mod the game, well, having the ability to mod almost everything within the game is a great feature to have. Now, normally I deliberate over this section for a little while, but it's easy on this one. This is absolutely excellent value for money. The number of hours that you can invest into this title is astounding. The replayability and just the content that's already available is second to none. If you're into cycling or you think you might be into cycling, this is a great, great game that should most definitely be on your wish list. Now, one sort of glaring omission, which maybe does or maybe doesn't apply to at least some of the people who are watching this review, female riders and animations. Now, personally, I would never pick to be a female rider, but that's not 
for any reason other than the fact that I'm not female, and I like to have it as realistic as possible. But I'm sure there are a plethora of female riders who would love to see and be able to create their own female riders in the game. And it seems odd that in 2020 that hasn't been included yet. It doesn't seem like that's a massive ask. Maybe we'll see that in 2021 as well. Hand on heart, Pro Cycling Manager 2020, in my humble opinion, is by far the best iteration of the PCM series so far. The bugs are at a minimum, the UI and the feature sets are at their absolute maximum, and if you start off in single player like I have done this year, then you can be fully up and running in next to no time at all. It really is a tremendous achievement to have so much detail and data provided for a sport which is so heavily reliant upon stats and precision in a way that retains the fun and enjoyment of the sport itself. It's fair to say I am absolutely loving Pro Cycling Manager 2020 and whilst PCM19 is, I think, the most positive turning point for the series in a very long time, PCM2020 has, I think, continued to improve upon its predecessor. This really is the best time to get into PCM if you haven't already. This is such a good game, I can't recommend it enough. Thanks for watching, I'm Mike, please hit that like button if this review helped you. Until next time, take care, goodbye.